So you want to own a horse? Uh, get ready for some dental work. It's one of the necessities of owning a horse. Um, in nature, horses eat things that can um, wear down their teeth naturally. Um, if you are going to own a horse, it's your responsibility to find a dentist or a vet that will do this for you. Um, I have um, a good friend of mine is my equine dentist. She owns Go to Win Dentistry and she's out today to help us out. We're going to do some um, we're going to do some teeth floating, it's called, and she's going to explain why. Okay, this is Kaylin and my horse holder, June. Say hi, June. Pretty girl. Hi. And so she's switching out her halters. A little more control. This is Willow. Uh, she tested her last time she was here and figured she has some points in there. I'll let her explain that. Okay. Okay. Yep, so you wanna, you know, this is a super invasive process, so you don't really wanna rush them. You know, if you can come up, like I've never really met her, I checked her once, but if you can come up, rub on her, kind of be friends with her first before you just start shoving stuff at her. And so, why, why do you wanna do this? Why do you, why should a horse owner worry about floating teeth? Um, it's super important for maintenance reasons. Um, it can correct problems, like if a horse is having trouble keeping weight on, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of people don't know that from the time they're super young, even like a year old, you should start routinely checking at least one to two times a year. Um, they form points on their top teeth. Their top teeth run all along the side of their head up here. And those points form on the outside of the tooth and they actually cut into the cheeks on either side. And those points are inevitable. They will form no matter what. It doesn't matter if your horse has the greatest chewing on the face of this earth, they will still form. The reason for that is their top teeth are actually larger than their bottom. So they were set up from failure, for failure, basically from the time the horse species was created. Um, people often ask like why don't you know wild horses aren't they fine blah 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 well wild horses have a diet that consists of a much rougher type of forage like they eat branches sticks that kind of thing and when a wild horse's teeth get so bad that you know they can't eat properly they just die <laughs> so that is the difference and that's the same thing with why you trim you know horses hooves domesticated horses so instead of just letting them die, you know, in this kind of area, we just do the dentistry um, that has come a long ways. And it's actually been around from as early as the 1600s. And it tailed off in the early 1800s and probably about the mid 1950s, they started really getting back into it. And it's now become one of the most important things. It can affect everything. If they don't have a healthy mouth, they will not have a healthy um gi system it can affect their balance the way they ride everything so the first step here we want to rinse out our mouth so that way my blades have some clean contact i can feel everything that's going on in there <clears throat> Girl. and willow's fairly new here so i honestly don't know her history of getting her teeth floated, and I don't know her behavior history. I notice um, when Kaylin comes out, we always try to um, do our teeth floating without sedation first. If it's needed, it's needed, but we try without. So we're gonna see how Willow does. Get it out, girl. Take a look at this. She's like a bridle. She's smell like other horses. Yeah, good girl. So these plates on the front here, they actually sit on her front teeth, her incisors. And because of that, it allows me to open up her mouth. So she's on there good, so I always like to give them a chance to get used to it. And we just pet them, make sure, you know, they're comfortable. Her eyes are really soft, so she's pretty relaxed. Girl. That's funny, isn't it? They always like to get, they're always weirded out because 
it goes on their incisors, which is way further up front in their mouth than like a bit would be. Good girl. And we just make sure it's nice and tight so that way there's no chance of her slipping off. Alright, she seems pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and open her. It's okay, it's okay. Good girl. Now I'm just going to feel, and what I'm feeling for is the points. I'm feeling if there's any unlevel teeth. Um, we didn't know for sure. I saw on her incisors that she definitely had a point that needed to be taken off. Um, it's a really good choice that we did here today. She's got some big sores way in the back. And that's from those teeth forming the points on the outside of those teeth, like I was explaining before. <clears throat> so now, this is what they call an 11 tool. And so you can get the furthest back teeth. backwards I'm not gonna protest because backwards is a lot better than forwards and you gotta remember this is so invasive she's only five years old from the judging from the size of these points she's never been done now she has a really narrow mouth conformation what that means is any little point that forms is gonna cut into her cheeks so she is definitely gonna be check every six months and if you want you can come see zoom in on one of these points here and you can see the size of that in comparison to my finger fingertip that is quite large for that to be in her mouth so we got those taken care of if you want you can walk it back up oh. does not want to Points do come off, it smooths right out. She has huge points. A lot of times, the younger horses have really big points because their teeth are really young, so they're really healthy. <clears throat> All right, so her top ones have been corrected. as the tops, the bottoms form points that cut inwards towards the tongue. They're the same inevitable points that will form no matter what. So what we do is we take this tool, which is called a straight, and we just go along the bottom and we pull all those points off. Now, it's really important to make sure when we're taking the bottoms off that you're holding this tool at the correct angle their teeth on the bottom have an angle of about 11 degrees and that's the most ideal angle for proper grinding against their tops okay, girl. now not all dentists do them unsedated um a lot don't like the way they move around i'm pretty used to it i would say about 90 percent of horses can be done unsedated and she's being excellent, especially for this being her first time. And she should just get better and better as she goes. All right, she is all done, so I'll shut her. She's done with her molars. Now, we I'm taught something that's called a three-point balance. And what that is, girl, is it's a balance between her TMJ, which is her jaw joint right here her molars that are all back in here and her incisors the teeth up front so what that means is we must address the molars and also the incisors to ensure that she's properly balanced all the way across 
And I'll show you something here that I noticed last time. She has, on the corner here, she has a hook right there. You see it? And what that does is she's actually locked up in her jaw. When a horse eats, their jaw actually comes down. It goes out, back up, and back across. So right now her forwards and backwards movement is locked up. So what we'll do is we'll take that down and that will free her up forwards and backwards. And then we check for something that's called lateral excursion. And what I'm checking for here is how well she's meeting in her molars. I just checked her left side, she's excellent. And she's perfect on her right side as well. So what that means is I will not have to take anything off across all her incisors because she's already touching perfectly. If she wasn't, then what we would do, and I can demonstrate with her, is take my blade and we would go all the way across to reduce these until they were matching the length of the molars in the back. So we'll go ahead and take those hooks off. Okay. Need to work on her front teeth just like the speculum we let her kind of look at it she's a pretty calm horse so she looks pretty disinterested so with horses that don't really show any signs of being nervous we can kind of move a little bit quicker than ones that would be a little bit apprehensive it's gonna go in her mouth just like a bit and we'll still give her a chance to get used to it and same thing we just pat her let her know she's a good girl and you can see her eyes, they're pretty soft, they're nice and relaxed, so she's not too worried about what's going on. Good girl. <clears throat> All right. So, we'll take my incisor tool, and we'll just let these hooks off. A lot of horses aren't a huge fans of the incisors. So she could be a little bit more reactive than the others, but she's not too bad. Now, if I were to reduce her incisors, I would go across the front like this, where I would reduce all of them. She doesn't need it. Good girl. I'm going to wait till she settles. I'll let her go. And she is. Show you something. Let me that. And like on the previous video, it showed that hook being there. You can see it's gone. So she's gonna to be totally freed up. She'll feel a lot better now having full range of motion in her jaw. And now we will just rinse her. And what this blue stuff is, this is chlorhexidine. It's watered down. And what this does is it'll help heal her sores that she has. And if I accidentally nicked her anywhere, It'll help heal those too. Good girl. We do one on each side, so one more. Good girl. Always let them look at it so they know what's coming. She is all set. I just want to pet her and make sure she knows she's a good girl so we have a good relationship. Oh. She's done with me. She wants to leave. <laughs> she's been excellent. Good girl. Okay. So some horses need to get done every, every six, months. six months. And everybody should be done. Some horses maybe. need once a year. I at least check them. So we're checking Rocky right now. Rocky's good till spring for sure. And he's good till spring. Yep. So yeah. all we do is we just reach back there. We feel points. Lafeel four points. His are really small, so he's good till spring at least. And look at me doing the rope halter correctly. <laughs> no, I didn't. Kaylin did. <laughs> I know because I used to do them backwards too, and I don't know. I was watching like a Clinton Anderson video, and I was like, huh. <gasps> okay, Zena. Okay, okay. We'll check Zena. Rocky, you're right, so cute. This rope halter. 
Like under this rope. Okay. Yeah, and then just backwards like this. Okay. <laughs> Why is that? I, I am tied. I know because you, I I'm used tying to go challenged. Up above. Okay. Rocket. All right, so let's check Xena. I have my kiddos here helping me, my lesson Rocky. kids, because I feel like this is you. very good for them to see. I thought you were whoever I was about to see. <laughs> She's got hooks starting. She'll be good till spring, too. Like February. Um, you should go probably March. Cash. Okay. Cool. All right. Nice. River. <sighs> Some horses just don't like it. <laughs> so we can just kind of wait her out there. Good girl. Oh. Right, so we're trying to figure out River here, and she seems a little sore. Yep. Oh. What you can do is you can rub, run your hand down the side of her teeth, and you see she wants to yank away when we get to a certain point. Cool. Easy, pretty girl. She also will do it on that side. Yeah. So she probably has some sores way back here. She's got a really narrow mouth conformation. So she's definitely a horse that needs to be kept up on every six months, so twice a year. Good girl. Um, a, a sedation called dorm only if necessary. Most of my horses here can be done without sedation. Notice I have danger on this. I only let her you handle this or myself with gloves. I keep this away from kids. Um, we, are just, we gave River some dorm sedation. Uh, she, there's no way we're going to be able to do her teeth without it. So handling a horse that's been sedated um, you can tell her head is very, very low. You can look at her eyes and see that she looks a little bit out of it. Notice her bottom lip is kind of hanging. Um, so, uh, she also feels warm. You don't want to leave a horse that's been sedated alone. I'll always I'll make sure that someone is standing by her. We also want to keep kind of the climate around her a little bit calm because we don't want her to wake up until her teeth get done. So I am gonna walk her nice and slowly over. If you notice, she's usually a pretty Daddy. high energy horse. Daddy. And she's not so high energy now. I really like to do any procedure I can without sedation, um, but sometimes it is a must. We don't want anyone getting hurt. We don't want the horse getting hurt. And we do need her teeth to get floated, so we're going to walk her nice and slow. All right. So very calm river right now. This is what one tube of dorm under the tongue. When you give to dorm, you need to give it under the tongue. Make sure you wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> River can be a little more difficult one to do. This will be the third time we've had her teeth floated in a year and a half. She's about an every six months horse, but she also does not like it. Needs to be sedated a little bit and takes a lot of patience. And it's a little cold today, so. are so close to her cheeks so I'm trying to make sure I really get those points well because even doing her every six months like we just caught her in time another month and they probably would have been cutting into her cheeks Narrow 
mouth confirmation. She's got a really nice mouth. Yeah, she's pretty hoarse. I'm not too happy right now, but I have to go to the dentist tomorrow there, River. <laughs> I feel the same way. Yep, nobody likes it. I don't like it either anymore. All right, now we'll do her patterns. Yeah, what do you think of this, Aubrey? <laughs> Good girl. Hey. Couple more waves. She's just making that noise because I'm so far back in her mouth. I know. She's not a happy camper. Good job. Oh, you look like a ragged meal. She's getting better and better. If she wasn't so reactive about her mouth, we could do her on today. Yeah. Oh, I feel better. Oh, you're such a good girl. There you go. She's waking up. River. And that would be why we sedated her. Yeah. Well, uh, River is finished. You can tell she's still sedated. We are not gonna put her back in the pasture to eat. We do not want her to eat for at least another 45 minutes to an hour. So we want her to move. So we're gonna walk her around. The more she moves, she'll wake up and she will sweat. When horses come out of sedation, they sweat a little bit. So because it's cold, uh, we may, um, I might think about putting a little light blanket on her tonight, um, but we'll see. Um, you can see that this very energetic horse is now, um, but she's going to feel better because her teeth are all good. We're going to walk her and when she perks right up, then I'll put her back in the pasture, but definitely not until she wakes up. Good boy. <laughs> Don't do too well. <laughs> silly. <laughs> silly, silly. Let I me... think he's flipping you off. I think so. <laughs> Let me check his insides and then I'll just rinse them. See, that feels better. It feels a lot better, isn't it? So it puts you in your sewer right there. Oh, this one wants to come off. I should just wipe that off. <laughs> so he's got, he's three, so he's losing some teeth. I know. That's yep. literally all the names of it. They're called caps. And he's got a really loose one. Oh. 
He's never had this on before. It's, his gay. it's a called a gay, like we explained before. And he's just a little wary of it. Good boy. So we just established a starting point. Now he's pretty good with it now. Good. There. And his eyes are relaxing. Now it'll go in his mouth just like a bit. Good. So we'll give him a minute before I start really messing with him. And you can see, if you want to get close, uh, that, <clears throat> that tooth right there. See how loose it is? We're just going to pull that cap off. That way he won't accidentally swallow it, which it's, they do swallow them. It's normally not a big deal at all. But uh, sometimes they get them back in there, like if they do swallow them, and it can get lodged somewhere. And that'll cause an abscess and stuff like that if left unchecked. So we'll just pull it off that way and you don't have to worry, worry about that. Okay. okay. It's fine. It is like fingers. This is where I don't look. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, okay. And if you want to show it, that's a baby okay. tooth. And that's one of his central incisors. <laughs> and you can see, see the the bit the adult tooth right there? that had already almost fully pushed that out and he's just bleeding it's just like when we lose a tooth you can see he's actually already clotted up so he's not bleeding bad nothing like that i'll rinse him with chlorhexidine and he's going to be good to go he probably is going to feel better because having that loose tooth constantly kind of is pressing against his gums it was causing him to bleed last time i was here so it'll actually probably be more comfortable now that it's gone all right we'll rinse him and he's going to be all set <laughs> Honey, she should be fine. Close spring. Okay, good girl. She hates me. <laughs> yeah, her ears always she's give always her away. She's always hated me. She's a typical mayor. Yeah, but she's actually quite sweet. But she's definitely an ear pinner. It's Austin. <laughs> yep, this is Austin. So Austin's been done regularly every year. But what we've come across, hey buddy, I'm not gonna touch you anymore is as i explained in a video earlier when we were doing willow the buckskin and we were checking her incisors with a method called lateral excursion um we found his incisors have never been done so what they've been doing is instead of using the three-point balance between the tmj molars and then also reducing the incisors they've only been taking tooth off of the molars and because of that Austin is actually, he probably has a gap about that big in his molars right now. His incisors are essentially holding his molars up, like open. So <clears throat> like his uh, Laurel here mentioned that when he eats his grain, it just falls right out of his mouth. It's because he's not touching at all. So now he has a good body condition for his age, for his breed, but he could look a lot better <laughs> if he was touching in the back like he should be so even though he's been maintained regularly in the molars the sharp points are gone everything like that because his incisors haven't been done he's actually not getting even half of what he should be out of his speed. what do you mean by an incisor like his incisors are his fronts so because his fronts their fronts are too long so they're holding they're creating a gap back here they're holding the molars up so what you want is to take tooth off back here or up here and that way this will gradually close because it'll just gonna even everything out i can show a picture if i draw a picture if it's easier okay. yeah okay. so austin got um his teeth floated yesterday and the dentist said that there was definitely some issues going on with um his teeth in here and his incisors so what i'm gonna watch for today is I want to watch and see when he eats if he's dropping grain. When he would eat, grain would just fall right out of his mouth. And so I'm watching to see if when he is eating, if that grain um, stays in his mouth, which that's a good sign that a horse might need their teeth done. If grain just does fall out, it means they're not chewing properly. Um, and with him being older, uh, we want him to keep weight on as best as possible. So you can see some grain still coming out, but definitely not like it used to. And a lot of it for him too might be habit. He's, um, but it looks a lot better than what it, what it did before. 
I can almost hear him chewing now where before it would just go right down. Yeah, that's much better. 